This is the Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite versus the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. Okay, for I'd say almost a year now, I've been using the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. I didn't upgrade to the Samsung Galaxy S20 because, well, A, I'd heard of a lot of bad reports. B, I didn't really think it was justifying the money uh, from moving from this to the S20, so I just decided I'm going to keep this for a full two years. I kept the S8 for a full two years, and I was quite sad to get rid of it, but... Uh, Got rid of it for this and I've, I've never looked back this is everything I need right now and I'm going to be mature and responsible about it so whenever it came to my wife needing a new phone I had a look at the S20 and I had a look at the Note 10 and I decided that uh, there was this oddity that appeared and I couldn't quite work out exactly what the S10 Lite was all about or the market that it was trying to occupy it seemed to be somewhat similar to the S10 Plus, a good bit bigger than the S10, uh, nowhere near as feature filled as the Note 10, and then uh, it was called the Lite, which would make you think that it's a very cheap alternative to the S10, but it's not the S10e, of which is the E stands for, well, believed to be economy. So where does the S10 Lite stand? Well, it was released at a time where, when the S20 was doing the rounds, and I fully believe that this is an alternative to sway people from maybe trying to pick up second-hand versions of the S10 Plus and the S10 and go for a nice, newfangled, well-worth-the-purchase uh, S10 option. And I just think it's badly named as the S10 Lite. So running down the specifications to compare the two together, I'll just move it about to make it a, a little more presentable. Uh, the S10 Lite has a 6.7 inch Super AMOLED Infinity O display, as opposed to the S10 Plus, which has a 6.4 inch curved dynamic AMOLED. Now, there wasn't an ultra version of the S10, so I guess this would be kind of fitting that area whenever it comes to the market. But given that the specifications of this are not quite as good as this, it just, again, seems a bit of an oddity. Now, the, uh, the resolution of this is, is 3040 by 1440, whereas the S10 Lite is 2400 by 1080. So there's a, a noticeable difference in the sizes where you've got the full QHD Plus on the S10 Plus. Also, the aspect ratio, because of the size of the screens, is a little different as well. This is 19 by 9 as opposed to 20 by 9. A bit of an oddity again. Uh, they both have the HDR10 Plus certified uh, screens as well, which, um, which makes for a, a very nice, bright, vibrant screen that really does... Well, I suppose the, the two phones are very much set up in different ways, but it really does uh, dazzle, and given the size of this screen looks good really looks good and that's one of the big sways of this if you were to walk into a phone shop you would likely find this and go oh i like that and there's a bit of a difference in the price here so i would probably go for that but then whenever you boil down some of the specs this does have a lot that this has to make it a proper good decision to purchase because they both have the snapdragon 855 octa-core processors which is, a, which is a really fast, nice processor. It's not the one that's in the S20. Although I'm not going to run a benchmark because this is actually the Exynos version, which you have to watch out for. I don't believe there's an Exynos version of this S10 Lite. However, there could be. I, I may be a mistake. You can correct me in the comments down below if there is. I got the Exynos version, uh, which was a bit of a, a mistake on my part, but I've this is an 8 gigabyte version. There is also a 12 gigabyte variant, whereas this is a 6 gigabyte version. There is also an 8 gigabyte version available, and they're both running DDR4 RAM. So it's nice, fast RAM with a, a decent amount that Android is really going to benefit from. One of the big differences comes in the camera array at the back. 
as you can see there's obviously a, a, a different setup this aligning more with the design factors of the s20 this having the s10 makeup so there's there's three cameras in both uh, in the s10 plus we have a 12 me megapixel optimal image stabilization dual pixel autofocus 4k video recording f-stop 1.5 to 2.4 camera in there as, a, as your main camera and then there's another camera in this one that is a 48 megapixel optimal image stabilized autofocus 4k recording f-stop 2.0 camera but then the second cameras really change the makeup as well because uh, this one has uh, a 12 megapixel super wide angle 123 degrees field of view f stop 2.2 camera as opposed to this which has the 12 megapixel telephoto camera with an f stop of 2.4 again with uh, optimal image stabilization and a dual pixel autofocus the, the third camera between the two is also significantly different as well with the uh, the light having the 5 megapixel macro camera with an f stop of 2.4 as opposed to the S10 Plus that has a 16 megapixel super wide angle lens with 123 degree field of view at 2.2. So there is a good deal, good deal of difference. This having the macro lens is actually something that this one doesn't have. And for certain people, that's, that's actually going to be a bit of a, a real influence whenever you want to actually be taking pictures of things close up. Having a five megapixel macro lens in there is pretty big it's, it's a really nice thing to have if you're looking to pick, take pictures of your dinner or bugs insects those sorts of things around the front you can just about see uh, we've equipped this one with a, a screen protector here which is nicely put in uh, you have the 32 megapixel f-stop 2.2 front facing camera here which is a good nice looking camera that uh, dishes out some pretty good shots uh, however, on here we have a 10 megapixel f-stop 1.9 with dual megapixel autofocus plus an 8 megapixel RGB depth center uh, at f-stop 2.2. They're obviously very different camera makeups on the front uh, with single and dual cameras. Uh, so it depends on how much you need your selfie camera. This does take excellent selfie shots. This just takes better excellent selfie shots. So when it boils down to the storage, you have options on this. You can pick it up with uh, 128 gigabytes, uh, 512 gigabytes, or a full terabyte inside, which was the really costly one. Uh, whereas this just has the, the one option, which is 128 gigabytes, but they both have micro SD cards. This one can take up to a terabyte of a, a micro SD card, whereas this can only support up to 512 they both now run Android 10. If you were to buy this, you might find that it comes with Android 9 and needs a significant update update to bring it up to to spec. Whenever I first opened this, there was an update to it as well, so I didn't actually investigate to see at the time if it was Android 9, but it's on Android 10 uh, with One UI 2.0, whereas this has One UI 2.1. And that brings us to DeX. This has it, this doesn't. That's a big thing for some people. I know DeX is a bit of a throwaway and some people will say, you know, it's, it, it, you wouldn't buy a phone for it. But actually, it is a bit of a lifesaver whenever it comes to, I need a desktop environment and I need it now. Your phone can actually do it. You don't have your laptop with you. This can do stuff that this is suffering without. So there are people who will go through life without ever touching DeX. That's fine that's what you need if, if you're not interested in DeX at all. When it comes to batteries as well, because this has the bigger screen, it gets a bigger battery. There's there's more real estate to be able to, to, to have to power. It has the same chipset inside it, so it's gonna to have to require the same battery at least, if not slightly more, and Samsung have done that. They've given it a 4,500 milliamp hour battery as opposed to a 4,100 milliamp hour battery. They have removed the wireless charging on this, so that, that's one whistle that this is really lacking and I wish I'd actually known at the time that it didn't have a wireless charging. One of the reviews I read said that it did and I went ahead and, and picked it up and then realized it's got a plastic back on it and it, it doesn't do the wireless charging. My wife said she was all right with that but I'm sure at some point uh, that she'll 
start looking for wireless charging. Looking around the device, at the bottom here we have a little speaker and we have some antenna bands and the USB Type-C. On this device we have something similar but we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack down here. There is also a, a cutout for the microphone hole and I guess I should mention that too. On this side we have the power button and I, uh, the antenna band just on there and a rather nice silver metallic feel to it. Uh, on this side we have something similar. Feels a wee bit more plasticky but it is uh, that metallic feel. And you have the power button and the volume rocker. Up the top on this we have the hole for the mic microphone uh, plus an antenna band and that's about it. It's unbroken. Oops. On the top of this one we have the cutout for you to remove the micro SD card and the SIM card tray and then there's a hole there for a microphone again. Around this side we have the volume rocker and the power button and an antenna band just at the top there. On the far side of this one we have the SIM card tray and that's about it. It's relatively naked along this side which is kind of nice. Everything is under the thumb. There is no Bixby button, which is no great loss. Whereas this one obviously has a Bixby button there. Maybe I said it was power earlier. I do apologize. So now obviously this has the wireless charging in here and this now loses it, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, so you can't do that and charge your device, but this has the bigger battery. So you're probably not going to need to do that. But if you were to buy wireless buds, uh, from Samsung, you won't be able to set them on this to charge them. Bit of a shame, as it's a, it is a really nice feature. But inside, you have all of the, the stuff you would expect. You have your accelerometer, barometer, fingerprint sensor, which is under the display, uh, gyro sensor, geomagnetic sensor, hall sensor and proximity sensor, all built into it, as you would expect from a Samsung device. Some of the other features that this would have are the likes of it comes with AKG headphones in the box. Uh, it does have the stereo speakers at the bottom. Uh, this doesn't actually have stereo speakers, which is a bit of a... It's not the worst thing in the world. The speaker's all right, but I wouldn't exactly recommend listening to some, some tunes on it. You're going to need to get maybe a Bluetooth speaker or something like that, or a decent pair of headphones if you want to be listening to music on this. Dolby Atmos. Atmos is built into both of them, however it only comes over the wired connection in the S10 Lite. Both front facing cameras can do facial recognition uh, to unlock your device, which is really handy, especially in this day and age where you're maybe not able to use your thumb to uh, get up your wireless contact for paying th for things in the shops. But then if you're wearing a face mask, uh, the retina recognition in the cameras is obviously going to be able to help you there. The S10 Lite does not feature the water and dust resistance of this which is sitting at IP68 and it does not have, as you can see on the back here, a heart rate sensor and biometrics and that sort of thing. There's only an LED flash at the side of the camera which is a bit of a shame. But other than that everything is is pretty much the same. Uh, those few things that it's dropped out are maybe not the most important things to many consumers out there and whenever you factor in the amount of money that you're paying for this compared to that you know if you go to samsung's website right now uh, you buy this for 579 directly from samsung obviously that price is subject to change depending on wherever you happen to be um and through other car from warehouses and things like that, you might be able to get this on deal or on special or with bundled things uh, because this actually comes with AKG earphones that I'm currently using at the moment to listen to myself on this. This costs to buy direct from Samsung today, 769 pounds. So there's a difference of 190 pounds, 100, yeah. Yep, 190 pounds uh, for losing wireless charging uh, losing decks, losing the water and dust resistance, losing the headphone jack, losing the stereo speakers. There's, so there, there's five things that you lose just off the top of the head, uh, but you gain a larger screen, a larger battery, 
a macro camera, which is arguably more useful than a telephoto. Uh, well, it depends on, on what you're doing. You'll want the other whenever you do it. This doesn't do bad macro shots as it stands. Uh, so I guess the cameras are, you're losing a telephoto lens. We'll, we'll go with that because that does take pretty superb macro shots. This may take better ones. Maybe I should do a little bit of a test right now. So we've got our camera and go to more and then we go for our macro shot and we're going to go for the dude that James Bond is going to shoot out of his car we'll go in as close as we can So now the obvious thing is we don't actually have a macro option on this, so we're going to go with, I don't know, we'll, we'll go with telephoto and we'll just zoom in as much as possible and we'll take a picture that way. So when you put all these things aside, picking up one of these second hand or on a on a clearance offer you might be able to get this for about 500 pounds maybe slightly less i have seen music magpie advertising at about 300 pounds but then that's been in perhaps dubious condition whereas this is brand new out of the box and i reckon this is samsung's strategy move to give people a decent option who aren't interested in paying the big money for the s20 and they're looking at last year's model and thinking about maybe picking it up and rather than buying a second hand Samsung are trying to give an option that you can buy a phone directly from them that meets everything that you want because to be honest whenever you look at the S20 it's going to have all the features that this has and some more I like this device I really do my wife loves it as well I don't feel I broke the bank by buying it I wouldn't trade my S10 Plus for it, but then again, I wouldn't trade my S10 Plus for an S20 Plus. If you own an S20 Plus, I'm sure you're going down to the comments now to go, are you mad? Don't you slag off my phone or anything like that? That's just my personal preference. I didn't see that it was worth the money to upgrade. I'm quite happy with this for the next year. And I know you can buy this for £300 secondhand in ropey condition, or maybe not ropey condition, but somewhat scraped, scratched, or well used the idea of someone's been sitting using it in the toilet uh, and now you're using it is not particularly attractive to me um so going out and buying a brand new device i'm i'm really glad that i got this and i i got this with a few discounts and things on it as well so i certainly didn't pay 580 pounds so the s20 light i think is a a badly named device it's great. I really like it. It's a really attractive option. It, it comes in this rather attractive pearlescent color. There's a couple of other colors that are available that I can't remember off the top of my head. But it looks nice. It performs really well. The camera is excellent. And it's half the price of the S20 options that are currently out. It, it beggars belief that um, this isn't one of the best selling phones at the moment. It's It's an option over the Apple iPhone SE 2020 of which I don't think it really compares it's not as good as the SE I hate to say it's bigger it's bulkier it's maybe not quite as pretty uh, but the SE has got its own target audience or target market this has its own target market it's a good alternative uh, the Pixel 4a is obviously on its way and I think between the three of them People who are looking to spend £500 on a phone right now have some really good options. This is excellent. Picking up a second-hand one of those or a, or a catalogue clearance version of one of these, uh, you'll probably be a lot happier with it because you do have other options that uh, are going to be missing. But between the two of them, if I was buying one right now and I didn't own this, I would probably go for that. I would. It's an excellent phone. It really is a very, very nice phone. Heartly recommended. So 
Let me know your thoughts down in the comments box below. Hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Remember to tune in to the Tech Addicts podcast on a Sunday afternoon and check out Talk Sport for Andy Goldstein's Sports Bar on a Wednesday morning at half past midnight where I chew over some of the weird gadgets in Inspector Gadget with Andy and Jason. And other than that, take care.